Welcome to a session of different programs I'll identify for you to actually use open source or community edition software to become a security guru in your environment. For example, you start a new job and you're a security analyst or officer in your environment and you don't have budget to go out and purchase the most expensive or market related all the actual um, marketing gum and things like that and everybody wants certain products there's for example Tenable which is a very good product there's also products like Qualys and many others that will cost a lot of money and if you're in a large environment you have to go through a proof of concept and also then motivations which can take you know sometimes up to I've seen companies take about a year to actually go through this process so what I'm going to show you here is to take a step back, download some open source software, install it on a small PC or in a virtual environment in, envi in your environment, and then you can actually do your scanning and be as close as possible to the commercial environment. What this will give you is that you are plugging that gap. You can't say, listen, we have to wait for that because if a person wants to compromise your environment, say a hacker wants to get in, he won't say, oh, let me wait for you to actually do your job. Um, so tell me when you've done that. Rather download something for free, install it, do a change control, speak to management and run and actually do the reporting and uh, be a superhero. Now, the product I'm talking about is OpenVAS, and this is how it would look like after we've installed this. But before we install this, we need to go download the open source of the Community Edition version and install this in our environment, which I'm going to do in a, in a virtual environment uh, using VMware. So let's actually go to openvas.org, and this is where the Community Edition is, and we're going to try out a virtual appliance. As you can see here, we're at version 6.03. At the moment, yours might be at a later stage. If you look at this um, video later, there's the actual uh, ISO. So we need to download that ISO and upload that to our VMware. Or if you install it on the PC, you can actually cut that ISO to a USB device a stick and then boot up from that. So download that. While it's downloading, let's look at the requirements. You have... ESXi, so we're going to use VMware. It says two CPUs and four gigs of RAM. So I'm going to use four CPU cores and eight gigs of RAM. And then lately as well, it says a virtual, a minimum of 15 gig, and I'll use 100 gig. And the reason why I'm using 100 gig, if I actually do run a lot of scans, you actually want to save that on that drive. Now, once that's downloaded, what we can actually do is just upload it to our virtual box and create the configuration and start the application. This is in the next step. The objective here is a very quick one. We're going to now install OpenVAS on a virtual environment. Here we have virtual VMware ESXi uh, and the storage I'll use. I've got some storage available here. I have uploaded the ISO already to the actual data store. And we're going to use that. So now what we're going to do is register a new machine. We're going to create a new machine. And because we're using an ISO, we have to boot it from there. So now let's call this OpenVAS. We're going to install version 6. And it's definitely Linux. And I presume it's Debian so far. We can look at that. I will install version 10. Now, also, if you identify this as, say, for example, Debian here, and it's not correct, it will tell you, and you can actually fix that later. From a storage solution, we will use where I have some spare capacity available directly on a disk. The amount of memory, the minimum we need is... 4 gigs, but what I will do is give it 8 gigs. The hard drive, it needs 15 gigs according to the specs. And what I'll do is just give it basically 100 gig. 
and I'll give it minimum two CPUs. Let's give it four CPUs. Now then also here under the CD drive, we're going to go to the data store and we will use the GSM to start up with. It's the latest we've downloaded. And that's basically it. So the network controller is all well it's connected. Next. So make sure we are happy with that. Four CPUs, eight gig. And we're going to boot from a ISO and the disk space we're giving is 100 gig. Okay, we've done that now. And what we'll do is then just start the device. This is the first part of the install. And now we have to create the setup. So we, the first option is setup, start setting up your GSM. We can erase the content, metadata, minimal shell, reboot or shut down. So because it doesn't exist, we'll actually just do the setup quickly. It says you want to install GSM Community Edition. Yes, we want to do that. It's now being prepared, so it's going to take a while to actually create the image, copy the files over, download updates if any is required, and present itself once it's happy that it's all done in the back end. What we can do as this is running, we can quickly look at how the disk capacity CPUs are actually being taken over. So it's still very low. Sitting at 9.83% on this machine. As you can see here, next part of the installation, it says it's in progress. It's being prepared and it's busy carrying on. So it will take quite a while because it actually downloads a couple of updates from the internet and also the community edition signatures for your scans. Now, it will ask you what is the admin user. Now, if you want to change this, it's usually a recommended process to change this because if somebody attacks your machine and it knows what it is, it knows the default is admin. But I'm going to leave it at admin at this stage just to make it easier for me. And it will say, give me a password of the administrator user. So I'm going to use a password. Otherwise, a random one will be generated for me. Now, once it's done, created the password and it asked me, should I reboot? Would you like to eject it? Let's actually eject it. So within VMware, it will actually eject that whole item. Now, by default, what it's going to do now is going to default boot into OpenVAST, GSM. So it's Greenbow Security Management. Now, the local host login is the admin account and, of course, the password that we've just created. And this will actually now give me into the grown bone interface. Now, it says it's not fully functional, so we need to complete the setup. Now, we can actually say yes, which is the default that we'll use. So let's do that. No network cable connected, connected decam and try. So here we've already got a, a little problem that we need to actually look at very quick. Retrying the network connection. There's now IP configured in your first interface of your GSM. Would you like to configure your interface first? Let's say yes. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. We can configure the network interfaces, domain servers, and let's actually do that. So first option. rebooting itself after the configuration now after the reboot you can see it's available at 126 so let's actually go back to the admin interface and see if it requires anything more from me and there's the normal default let's actually go yes no user for web interface has been defined now the next step is after We've created the admin, we've created, configured the interfaces for the network access as we saw dot one twenty six in my network. You need a user that can log on to your system. So let's create the global user now. So we're going to create a user, for example, here we are. Let's create a security monitor. We'll create a password. Oops. 
So once we've configured the user with a password, the user has been created. We're all happy about that. And then we're going to configure the rules. Now, by default, there's no subscription key for the Greenboat security feed installed. You can use the community edition, which costs you nothing, or you can actually purchase your own key. Let's go ahead and skip and use the community edition. And the next item will say there's no feed present on this machine. Do you want to download the feed? Now, what it's going to do now is download the community edition. It's going to take some while, and then it will be ready for you to scan. So it's a background operation. And what you can do once you actually see that a background operation has been created, we can do a check to see what is going on. So you can actually see when the actual download of the feed is completed. Now, once it's told you that there's no feed happening because you don't have a key, click OK and you get into this. You can set up, but the most important one here is the About section to tell you about what's going on about your GSM. So if you go to that, it will tell you that there's no feed present, no key present because it's the default install, so this still has to happen, and the system operation update feed is running currently. So you give that a few minutes, you come back, and you'll see that the feed is completed. So once this is run completely, we can go to the Greenbone OS administration and look at it about quickly. And you'll see here that we've got the GSM is Community Edition. The version is 6.03. The feed version is Friday, February 28th, 11.08, 2020. So there's no subscription key. So this is a couple of days old usually. And this is about three days old. And this is my IP address that I can access the front end of the vulnerability scanner. Right, fantastic. Now, once we've actually installed the Greenbone Security Manager, or the OpenVAS as it's otherwise known is, we can go to the interface, go to your browser, being Chrome, being Edge, whatever, and log into the IP address. Now, the user ID that you've created for the web in admin interface, you'll use that interface and then log in. Now, as you can see here, we have no scans at the moment, but what it's telling me here that we've got, these are the amount of NVTs or CVE, Common Vulnerability Exposures, that is in the database that it will use to scan. Now, what you can do is two ways of doing it. You can actually go to tasks, and within tasks, you can create a new task, or you can use the task wizard or advanced task wizard. And by normal, if you use the task wizard, all you have to do is define an IP address and start the scan, and that is it. There are additional configurations which I'll look at later, to make sure that you can scan machines even if it is blocked off from a ping or ICMP echo request. Now this is one of the quickest ways you can get on doing performing scans and vulnerability scans in your organization without spending money. You might go to another product later after the budget has been approved which may, might make it a little bit easier for you but this is definitely a stop, stop gap measure that you can actually use to get into your environment. One recommendation I need to identify here, you must listen to this, is that you must not do any scans in your organization or on outside people without approval process and inside a change control process. These scans can sometimes contain destructive scans which will make sure that the system actually falls over. So it'll actually use those exploits to down the system to see if it is if, if it is exploitable in that so so this is it one of the freeware stuff that you can use and actually get up and running and look like a hero in your organization